Happy morning church. I am Roni Jovan from Pernatu Church which is the branch of the Ark Victory Church. This is in the area where our doctor center is there. This church is under the leadership of Pastor Sam and Elsta. It's my joy to be a part of this service. I am here to welcome you to our online service. Thank you for joining us and we are glad to have you on our online service today. We hope that you experience God's presence and power in the service today. The Ark is a multicultural and interdenominational church. Our mission is transformation of life by creating a hunger for prayer, for God and worship. We believe discipleship groups are as important as large Sunday gatherings. The Ark is a mission focused church. We carry a heart to reach out to every district of the nation with the love of Jesus. The main part of our tithes and offering goes to work supporting the poor and taking the message of hope across the nation of India. After this pandemic, we have been reaching out and supporting the needy with food, medicines and hygiene kits. We encourage you to get ready and open our hearts to worship the Lord and wait with an expectation for the powerful word that our pastor shall bring today. For any other information, connect us with the number flashing on the screen. Over to the Ark Worship Team. Good morning, church. The Lord is worthy of our praise this morning. Father, we've come to exalt you. We thank you because the power of the grave is defeated. The power of hell is defeated. And we have come to join the 24 elders and the angels to declare that you are worthy to be slain, O God. We give all the glory back to you, Jesus. We shout, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. As our praises rise up to you, Jesus, let your power come down, come and dwell in our homes, come and dwell in our families, come and manifest yourself, O God. You will be glorified, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's worship Jesus. He's Hosanna. Church, I want you to join me. Praise God this morning because He's worthy of all praise. Praise is rising, hearts are turning to you, we turn to you. To face the day in your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Oh, Santa, oh, Santa, you are the God who saves us, you are the of all our praises. Oh, Santa.
I want to see you. Can we declare it this morning, church? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Can we clap our hands along? Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you. of your goodness. I am not ignorant of your faithfulness. I am not ignorant of your grace, O oh God. But I choose to see you this morning, Father God. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Are you a witness this morning? All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me to the fire in darkest night you were close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend I have lived in the goodness of God hey the goodness 
of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. showed us oh God and so we commit to you this morning and say father you take the wheel over our lives oh God our one desire is to love you our one desire is to praise you our one desire is to be only just as you are only oh God our one desire is to be like you to talk like you God one desire is you Jesus because you are the only way you are the truth and you are life amen
commit to God this morning and say, God, I'm ready to do your will. I'm ready to walk your way, oh God. Where you lead me, I will follow. Where you lead me, I will follow, oh God. I commit to you this morning, oh God. I commit my life to you this morning, oh God. I commit my family to you this morning, oh God. I commit my walk to you this morning, oh God. That you take the wheel over my life and you drive me, oh God. It's a blessing and privilege uh, to us to welcome everyone those who have joined with us for the very first time to worship along with us and we would love to take this time to pray with you and pray for you and on behalf of the Ark Victory Church we welcome you uh, as you come and join with us for the very first time Anjali is here and Anjali will lead us in the prayer for each and every one let's pray shall we pray Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have given to us. 
we will rejoice and celebrate you on this day lord so very specially we thank you for all those who have joined us for the first time oh lord we pray for open heavens lord lord we pray that you would reach out and touch them this morning oh lord that your word oh lord god lord would work wonders in their life so lord god we as a church bless them and we give them to you in jesus name i pray amen amen, amen. church we'll continue to pray we will specially pray for the needs of the church the lord has been very gracious to us he has been meeting our needs he has been our healer he has been a provider during this time very specially we want to praise god for what he's doing through rakshak so continue to pray for the relief work that is uh, happening through rakshak very specially today as we uh, as we celebrate the perindutul church as we pray for sam and uh, pastor sam and elishta we we just give god the glory amen so yes so let's join together and shall we pray for the church as a whole and for god to use the church as a lighthouse in this area and can we pray can we all join together father in the name of jesus we join together we bless our church bless our people of oh god father lord yes lord as we are hearing on this uh, uh the the teaching on the end of the age of god lord we pray even lord bring our people out of every shackles uh, and lord let everyone be found in you lord jesus christ and you just take care of every details every need of every individual in jesus name every physical emotional financial spiritual needs of god father take care of every need we pray your blessing over our people we pray your blessing over the church as a whole oh lord our petras and rakshak oh lord we pray in jesus name every needs be taken care even for the missions of god across north india we pray your blessing and you be glorified you be exalted we worship you we bless your holy name especially lord even our people those who are still tested positive we speak your healing touch of god and lord we pray your blessing over our perivathu church bless sam and elishta and use the team there powerfully for your glory in jesus mighty name we thank and we pray amen thank you so much let's all join together and continue to worship the most high god god bless you Church Perangalathur branch Every Sunday morning 8:30 to 10:30 we have a Tamil service happening in the church God has been so good to us he is blessing the church let's hear some of the testimonies from the church Enni per Rachel naanga rendu varam husband wife rendu varam blind inda inda Perangalathur pagudhikku varumbodhu naanga romba kashtamana solla after or dress kuda illama vandhom adhu mari inda sunnile engala vandhu inga church la எங்க பாஸ்டர்ங்க வந்து நிறைய எங்களை விசாரிச்சு எங்களுக்கு தேவையான எல்லா உதவியும் நிறைய செஞ்சாங்க அதோட இல்லாம ரட்சக் மூலியமா என் பிள்ளைங்களுக்கு படிப்பு எனக்கு பார்வை தெரியாதனால சொல்லித்தர தெரியல ஆனா ஸ்பெஷலாவே என் பிள்ளைங்களுக்கு ரொம்ப நல்லா கவனிச்சு அவங்களுக்கு நல்ல சொல்லி தந்து இம்ப்ரூவ்மெண்ட் வர வச்சிருக்காங்க அதுக்காக நான் ரொம்ப நன்றி சொல்ல கடமைப்பட்டிருக்கேன் தேங்க்ஸ் பெருங்கலத்தூர் சர்ச்சில இருந்து எனக்கு எங்களுக்கு உதவி செய்தாங்க என் கணவர் வந்து வேலை இல்லாம இருந்தாங்க அதனால நாங்க வந்து ரொம்ப கஷ்டத்துல இருந்தோம் இருந்த அரிசி பருப்பு எல்லாம் தீர்ந்துருச்சு அதுக்காக எனக்கு சர்ச்சி மூலியமா ஜபம் பண்ண சொன்னேன் நான் அவங்க எனக்காக ஜபம் பண்ணாங்க எலிசா சிஸ்டரும் சாம் பாஸ்டரும் ஜபம் பண்ணாங்க ஜபம் பண்ணது ஒன்று பார்த்தாது எங்களுக்கு உதவி செஞ்சாங்க அரிசி பருப்பு எல்லாம் கொடுத்து எனக்கு உதவி செஞ்சாங்க அது மட்டும் இல்லாத எனக்கு உடம்பு சரியாத இருந்ததுக்காக பண உதவியும் செஞ்சாங்க அதற்காக என்னோட பேர் பெண்ணி ஆறுமுகம் நான் இயேசு அறியாத குடும்பத்தில இருந்து வந்திருந்தேன் பெருங்கலத்தூர் சபைக்கு வந்த பிறகு இயேசு முழுசா சொந்த ரட்சகரா ஏற்றுக்கொண்டு இப்போ முழு குடும்பமா ஞானஸ்தானமும் எடுத்துக்கொண்டோம் பெருங்கலத்தூர் சபையில் நடைபெறும் சபை ஆராதனை தேவ வார்த்தை ஜபம் எல்லாம் எங்களுக்கு மிகவும் ஆசீர்வாதமாகவும் பிரயோஜனமாகவும் உள்ளது கடந்த வருடம் நாங்கள் கொரோனாவில் பாதிக்கப்பட்டிருந்த பொழுது 
எங்கள் போதகரும் முழு சபையும் இணைந்து எங்களுக்காக மிகவும் உதவி செய்தார்கள் இந்த பெருங்கலத்தூர் சபையை கொடுத்த தேவனுக்கு ஸ்தோத்திரம் நம்மால் தேவனை ஒன்றாக சேர்ந்து ஆராதிக்க முடியவில்லை ஜெபிக்க முடியவில்லை கத்துடைய வார்த்தை நம்மால் கேட்க முடியவில்லை நாங்க பெருங்கலத்தூர் சபையில ஜூம்ல கனெக்ட் ஆகலாம் முயற்சி செய்யும் போது எங்களுக்கு நெட்டி கிடைக்கல பாசர் வந்து கான்பரன்ஸ் கால் மூலியமாக பாசிங் பிரேயர்ல எங்களுக்கு கத்துடைய வார்த்தையை தெரிவித்துக் கொள்கிறார்கள் நாங்க தேசத்திற்காக ஜெபிக்கிறோம் தேவ ஊழியர்களுக்காகவும் சபைக்காகவும் ஜெபிக்கிறோம் முக்கியமாக கொரோனாவால் பாதிக்கப்பட்டவர்களாக நாங்கள் ஜெபித்துக் கொண்டு வருகிறோம் இது எங்களுக்கு ஒரு புதிய அனுபவமாகவும் மிகுந்த ஆசீர்வாதமாகவும் இருக்கிறது பெருங்கத்தூர் சபைக்காக நான் தேவனை ஸ்தோத்திருக்கிறேன் கத்தோடைய பரிசுத்தி ஸ்தோத்திரம் பெருங்கத்தூர் ஆர்கிட்ரி சபையின் மூலமாக நடந்த அந்த இருபத்தோரு நாள் உபவாச ஜபத்தினால் கத்தர் எங்கள் குடும்பத்தில் பெரிய காரியங்களை செய்தார் பெரிய ஆசீர்வாதங்களை எங்களுக்கு செய்தார் அதற்காக கத்தருக்கு ஸ்தோத்திரம் பெருங்குளத்தூர்ஸ்ரி <laughs> Thank you. God this is Sam from Ark Victory Church Perumlathur now is the time to give our tithes and offerings to our God so many people are asking questions about tithing why should i tithe so many people debate about tithing but i have personally experienced the goodness of tithing in my life uh, in the book of uh, genesis we read god made a covenant with abraham because of the covenant relationship we are all, we are bringing our tithes and offerings to our God in genesis chapter chapter 14 uh, we read from 17 to 20 uh when abraham was returning from war he met with two kings one is one is like king of sodom and the other is melchisedek who is a king and he is a high priest also here the king of sodom is ready to give all his uh, possessions uh, goods and materials to abraham and the other end melchisedek is also standing with bread and wine in his hand uh, abraham didn't choose to receive the offer of the king of sodom who symbolizes the holy thing but he chose to receive the blessings from melchisedek who symbolizes jesus christ verse 20 we read melchisedek blessed abraham and abraham gave a tithe of all the world the world may offer you with so many things but abraham chose to give his tithe and he chose to stand in the covenant relationship with god we as a believers has covenant with god and in the same way we have covenant with this church also we as a ark family we stand with this covenant relationship because of the covenant relationship i obey for his scriptures by giving tithes to his church i obey his scriptures by giving 
tied to this church and because of that covenant relationship god is like opening up covenant blessings in his life this is the secret in we have to understand we give tithe out of the relationship out of the faith and out of the love you will see covenant blessings when you release tithes when you when you sow a seed you will see the covenant blessings in your in your financial life in your family life in your spiritual life in your children's life without having doubt i am encouraging you church let's give it out let's join with this covenant relationship and god will bless you with this covenant blessing let's uh, let's give out to god church today i encourage you in the account numbers like you can just give it give your tithes and um, in gpay through gpay you can give your tithes and offerings let's join yourself with this covenant don't stand alone but asking questions and doubts in your heart but let's join and receive the blessings of god let's all pray right now Lord I pray Lord Father God Lord as we heard Lord of Father God about Abraham let's stand with this covenant relationship Lord Father God when we obey your scriptures Lord Lord through this covenant relationships Lord Father God Lord you will be blessing our family life our marriage our children Lord Father God Lord I pray Lord as people give Lord Father God out of faith and out of love Lord Lord I pray Lord let the covenant blessings Lord Father God to be released Lord right now Lord Father God I pray Lord breakthrough Lord Father God I pray Lord Father God miracles and wonders happen Lord Father God you take over Lord Father God in Jesus name Lord Father God we thank and pray Lord Father amen and amen praise is rising hearts are turning to you we turn to you strength to face the day in your presence all our fears are washed away washed away oh sana oh sana you are the god who saves us you are the of all our praises oh sana Praise God and glory be to his name. We are hearing on this series called the end of the age. There have been all kinds of good responses that I have been receiving from some people and yes, 
this is the first time ever that I'm looking at this important subject and I did tell you how it got kindled while I was talking to Sean, my son, when I was having a conversation and when there were many different questions that were being raised from him. And there are a few other questions that I'm still to address and I believe in the next week or so, I'll be addressing that as well. And it is so important for us to have a clear understanding on some of these truths and, uh, and so that we don't get into any kind of unnecessary speculations. But today, as we get into God's word, shall we pray and ask God to minister and speak to us? Can we look unto the Lord? Can I encourage every one of us not to be distracted by anything, but at the same time, give ourselves fully, wholly, completely in the presence of God and ask him and allow him to minister to us. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord, and we welcome your presence in our midst of God, Father, into our homes. And Lord, we pray that you speak to us. You have your way, Lord. Speak to every heart. Speak to every individual, O oh God. And Holy Spirit, you take over this time. And you alone be glorified. You alone be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank and we pray. Amen and amen. Fine, so today, I just want to be covering on one important topic, subject, and it is tough in a way to preach. And the subject is, today I'm bringing to you the word uh, on the hell, the hell fire. Now, as we even get into the subject, first and foremost, it's very important for us to understand and to get it very clearly and hear it loudest Hell is not created for you. Hell is created for the Satan and his angels. The scripture says in Matthew chapter 25 verse 41, then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Please hear this, eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So hell is actually prepared for devil and his angels, but because of mankind deciding to follow the Satan, hell had to be enlarged. Now it is very, I, I'm just bringing some of the interesting facts as we dive into the sermon today. First and foremost, the hell is mentioned 167 times in the Bible. And it is mentioned by different names as Hades, the lake of fire, eternal fire, and etc. And it's, it's even surprising that Jesus, when he lived on the space of earth, he taught about hell 33 times in the three and a half years of his ministerial life on the space of, space of earth. And what is more interesting is Jesus taught about hell even more than the heavens. Now, why did Jesus do that? Just because Jesus was full of love and compassion and he didn't want and he still don't want that anyone should perish and anyone should get into hell. And so Jesus comes back cautioning in many different ways and in his own lifetime, he spoke about hell more than 33 times. But whereas all these are true, but at the same time, there are even many Christians, those who don't uh, you know, believe in the literal heaven and the hell. And there are groups of people outside of Christianity, those who don't believe in hell. Uh, one is the atheist. First and foremost, atheists, they don't believe in God at all. So thereby, they don't believe in hell as well. So according to them, Man just comes into existence and after his death, he's just going to go out of existence. That's it. That's the end of a man. Yeah, that's how atheist thinks. Uh, and, but you know, uh, I don't believe in atheist. I do not know about many of you. At least most of you, I, 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 I think you don't believe in atheist. I don't believe in atheist. Not just because that I believe in God or I believe in Jesus Christ. If I have to be believe in atheist or atheism, uh, that means I have to, I, I mean, that means they have to be all knowing. If they know everything, probably I, may ca I, I can trust them. But you know, even according to the scientists, the greatest of human minds, uh, 
they they only have two percentage of knowledge so if that is the case even the greatest of the atheists they only know two percentage of many things they are not all knowing so i don't really believe in the atheists the other group of people are the ultimately reconciliationist yeah so these people these group of people what they believe is at the end of the day at the end of the day age everyone will be reconciled with god so what they believe is even anyone who does wrong and the worst of the activities on the face of earth they have been involved in all kinds of wrong doings they still will be reconciled with god and their philosophy is yes for some time for a period of time they will be in the hell and later on they will be reconciled now according to the degree of their wrong doings so shall be the period of them being away from god and then they will be reconciled but bible doesn't support this and there is another group of people there are quite a few group of people i'm just men- mentioning few few another group of people they are the universalist so what they believe is according to them god is a loving god and so people cannot be uh, thrown into hell and uh, sounds good but it's not true yeah and unfortunately many christians have gone into these kind of teachings as well because they say how a loving god can send someone to hell but let's dive into the scriptures today i am taking a portion from the gospel of luke chapter 16 let's get into the scripture so i'm reading from chapter 16 verses 19 through 31 please pay close attention to it the scripture says there was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed some sumptuously every day but there was a certain beggar named lazarus full of sores who who was laid at his gate please hear this some say this is a parable but there are quite a few a bigger larger group of theology and don't think that this is a parable but rather this is a, jesus was talking of a real incident jesus was talking about a certain rich man jesus was not mentioning about the parable some do say yes it's a parable but here first and foremost it doesn't start saying that oh here is a parable no this it starts from there was a certain rich man and not only that the other person's name is mentioned as lazarus a specific name yes yeah, so the name is mentioned as lazarus but again this is not the same lazarus who jesus raised from the dead so you know there's a big group of theologians who don't see see this as a parable but as a real story there was a certain rich man who lived and this was this this is what happened among that particular person okay so the scripture goes on to say it so it, it was that that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried and being in torments in hades he lifted up his eyes and saw abraham afar off and lazarus in his bosom then he cried and said father abraham have mercy on me and send lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for i am tormented in this flame but abraham said son remember that in your lifetime you received your good things and likewise lazarus evil things but now he is comforted and you are tormented the word you- tormented is used, used again and again let's look into it and verse 26 and besides all this between us and you there is a great gulf fixed so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot nor can those from there pass to us then he said i beg you therefore father that he would send him to my father's house for i have five brothers that he may testify to them lest they also come to this place of torment abraham said to him they have moses and the prophets let them hear them and he said no father no father abraham but if one gets one goes to them from the dead they will repent but he said to him if they do not hear moses and the prophets neither will they be persuaded through one rising rising from the dead yes whether it is a parable or not 
whether it is a true incident or not first first and foremost is Jesus is talking about it Jesus is talking about hates Jesus is talking about eternal fire Jesus is talking about that there is a hell and so anyway so here is this particular person Lazarus a poor man who dies and who's seen in Abraham's bosom and here the word hates is used hates is the original Greek word for the hell and again uh, as I told before the word torment is used again and again in this small set of scriptures now what is the what is the meaning of torment as in English many words have two three you know different meanings the word torment in original Greek as well uh, has at least three meanings and one of the meaning is the acute pain because of a terrible disease the next meaning is it is like a person placed over the sharp objects sharp object if a person is placed over a sharp 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 object and ultimately the sh sharp object piercing into that person and one more meaning of the word torment is a fire which is hard enough even to melt the any metal so so this is the kind of the situation the rich man uh, is in he's he's being tormented in the hellfire now now as he's there in that hellfire there are certain things the rich man is desiring first and foremost the rich man desires for comfort by being tormented in the hellfire look at look at his request he says please send Lazarus to me that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in the flame please here he is not asking for a bucket of water a glass of water he's just asking Lazarus to to dip his finger and let that tip of that finger touch his tongue whatever kind of request to this of this rich man because that's the kind of the torment that's there in this in the hell many a times we do not hear sermons on the hell and I do not want to create fear but at the same time as a pastor as a shepherd it's my responsibility to create a caution the life that we are living it's very very important for us that we bring our acts together it's very very important for us in this life when we have opportunity when we are breathing that we lead a life that is not stubborn that is not rebellious but that is humble that is repented turning towards God this one life I just encourage that let's not be disobedient to God now why the hell is created we heard it before the hell is not created for mankind but it's mainly for the devil and his angels but because of man's disobedience you know there is hell but God has not prepared hell for us but you know what is the good news if you read the gospel of John chapter 14 God has prepared heaven for us and God prepares the mansion for you and me so first and foremost the rich man is desiring for comfort yeah number two the rich man expresses concern he tells he goes ahead and he tells God please send him to my father's house and have my brothers and let them hear the truth and let them be repenting so that they should not come to this place you know what in hell there can be many thoughts running like this probably let someone go ahead and tell my spouse Someone should go ahead and tell my son, my daughter, my family uh, members that they need to repent. They, their life needs to be turned around because they should not come into this place. But also there can be other thoughts as well. People can be thinking that, oh, probably no one will go because hardly anyone came and cautioned me and warned me. It is important that we surrender of a life to Jesus one life that we have and let us live it out for the glory of God you know years before when I was not knowing Jesus Christ 
my life was destined towards the hellfire but i am so grateful to the lord that very wonderfully he sent my pastor to preach the gospel into my life and i accepted jesus christ now please hear this christian friends and every other ch uh, church folks many a time we say that oh if i am a christian i will go to heaven 100% if jesus is the lord and as the savior of your life surely you will go to heaven last week we also heard our belief decides where we are our behavior decides how we are but my only challenge here is if you really believe in your heart and confess that jesus is your lord your life will not be the same but if your life is the same after even accepting jesus christ if you're continuing in the same kind of habits if you're continuing in the same kind of strongholds if you're continuing in the same kind of a lifestyle i'm so sorry to say i really question your christian belief how is our christian belief when when we accept jesus christ our heart changes our life changes and you know yes in our spirit there is salvation but in our soul there is a work of salvation there is a continuous work of salvation that happens till the coming of the lord jesus christ for instance yes i was going to hell i accepted jesus christ but when i really fell in love with the gospel when i really fell in love with god you know i couldn't continue in my habits i couldn't continue in the lifestyle that i was living and i was a totally a new creation a new person and and still there are a lot of things that needs to be worked in my life and i'm a work in progress and there is salvation working in my life with fear and trembling years before when shawn was around 5 years 6 years old today he is 18 we went to new delhi we were in delhi we myself anjali and shawn there was no junu then we went to delhi for a conference for a victory conference so we were staying in a place and that was the time you know the facebook and you know all the social media was coming bit alive and i got connected to my old friends uh, from jammu with whom i studied uh, in in jammu a major part of my teenage years i lived there seven plus years i lived there and so uh, one of my friend was in army then he was a major today is a colonel so he got into a connect and uh, he realized that i'm coming to delhi he, he tried to gather all my friends and we he organized for a meeting so one day in the evening he came to the place where we were living and me anjali and shawn he drove us to the place where all the other friends were waiting i was not knowing where he was taking us and so i just hopped hopped onto the car and uh, he drove us to this uh, uh, place called uh, cannot place and my few other friends were waiting one of my friend uh, who's a journalist another friend he is in cbi uh, one of the girls i mean she's married today she was there in iit so all these guys gathered together and you know where he took us he took us into a pub and all my friends were waiting and anjali got the shock of her life and she couldn't react but they were all very good they were like babi ji and jay and all that and and i couldn't say anything to them i was just quiet and they were offering me drinks and i refused to take anything i was just taking some cool drinks and anjali refused and we were just having some grub we were just having some food and these guys started drinking and they became high and they started bringing out all <laughs> they they started bringing out all the old stories and i was like shell shocked because anjali was so shocked to hear all the stories and but what i am here to say is that was my life that was the life that i had but the moment i accepted jesus christ the moment i came into this path where he is the way the truth and life my life is no more the life that i lived before so if you say that you are a christian how is your behavior how are your actions how are your decision makings and for what you're living your life it matters time is running days are few jesus is coming soon 
let us watch out our life and tr trust me dear friends hell is real and god doesn't desire that anyone should end up there and it's important that we bring our act together bring our life together for eternity to eternity we need to live with him rather reign with him so he was looking for comfort he was he, he, he showed concern then the next is the rich man seeks for consolation what he's saying is it is good if someone from the dead goes and tells my family tells my people probably they will repent and the response comes is they have moses and the prophets what does it actually mean who is moses who are the prophets please hear this the first five books of the bible was written by moses and the rest of the books of the bible were written by the prophets the major prophets and the minor prophets and those days there was only the old testament so what what is said here is if they cannot believe the bible even if someone rises from the dead they will not believe what he means to say jesus is talking about himself because he's the one who is going to be rising from the dead please hear this before the resurrection there was hell and there was a place of waiting which is called as the abraham's bosom now before jesus could ascend to heaven the scripture says that he descended to the lower parts of the earth and he actually took everyone those who were waiting which is called as the abraham's bosom the patriarchs of the old he took them into the heavens and that's where he said to the thief who was on the other side today you will be with me in paradise but there is a future hell that is a, a fully a lake of fire we will come to it and it is known as the place of darkness here in this place this rich man could see could talk but the future hell is not like that it is called as a place of utter darkness now as we understand as, as we try to understand this please know that there are two physical properties that keeps us agile one is the light and the other one is so solid you know even a blind person can understand the light and the darkness and can recognize the light but when we read the scriptures the scripture says there is no light in the hell it is called as the place of utter darkness you can i mean some say oh we can see the people there and all that no you cannot see anyone it is a place of utter darkness next another thing another important physical properties property that keeps us agile is solid something which keeps us mentally stable something to hold on to something to grab on to but you know what in the hell there is nothing solid it is called as the bottomless pit you will never sit you will never stand or you will never even have a place to hold it is called as the bottomless pit and not only that there are two emotional properties that keeps us stable and one emotional property is rest now you can say pastor rest is a physical property as well yes it is physical property but it it blesses our emotions more yeah and the scripture says that there is no rest in hell there is no hope in hell as well yeah in revelation chapter 14 verse 11 the scripture says and the smoke of that to torment will rise forever and ever there will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image or for anyone who receives the mark of its name so there is no rest in heaven so rest is even an emotional property for instance you know when 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 we are very tired we get very frustrated very irritated very easily isn't it many a times i am like that uh it's better that i don't take any main assignment at the end of the day you know during the sleeping hours why because i'm tired many a times i am irritated i am fresh i am not fresh at all many a times i have a title in my home all my children my wife 
they have given this title especially in the night time if i'm not going to bed on time and if i get irritated i am called as the humpy lumpy grumpy beast which means oh dad is becoming a humpy lumpy grumpy beast which means it's time for him to go to bed yeah so rest is a is 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 a emotional property that keeps us stable and another thing is yes there is no hope in hell i just want to encourage everyone here whatever the mistakes you would have done there have been times that you would have done wrong there would have there would have been times that you would have been under any kind of a bondage and sin anything even secret that many may not know and it can you can be very independent about your own life but i just want to tell you you know when there is time when it is called today let us repent let us turn back to god because as long as you breathe on the face of earth there is hope and jesus is able to turn around your situation but there is no hope and please know that the enemy is very very deceptive he comes and tempts you attacks you with flowery words with something that may seem to be good but it may not be good the scripture is very clear to tell us that he doesn't come like with two horns and a tail but he comes as an angel of light but he is a he is a devil of darkness he comes and attacks in three important ways please hear this carefully first is he himself in a very devilish satanic way comes and attacks you and we need to be we, we need to be careful the scripture says in first peter chapter 5 verse 8 be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour so god asks us to be careful peter is warning us to be careful what does it mean because of the how he attacks us by the circumstances and the situation he does god does not want us to bow to the enemy but rather in everything by faith by the word of god by the spirit of god we are called to live our life the next important way that he comes and attacks us is through the fleshly desires galatians chapter 5 we can read it from verses 19 onwards the scripture says when you follow the desires of your sinful nature which means your fleshly nature the results are very clear sexual immorality impurity lustful pleasures idolatry sorcery hostility quarreling jealousy outburst of anger selfish ambitions dissensions divisions envy drunkenness wild parties and other sins like this let me tell you again as i i have before that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of god yes once satan attacks by himself next is by the fleshly desire then through the worldly desires by making you and me very worldly james chapter 4 verse 4 adulterers and adulteresses do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with god whoever therefore wants to be the friend of the world be a friend of world makes himself an enemy of god what is that the world has its value system the world has a culture the world has a way of thinking and the world lives in that particular way god wants us that we should have our values based on god's word we should have kingdom culture and we should not be driven by all of these and it's important for us to be cautious so it's important that we we are we are cautious of the schemes of the enemy You know Jesus addresses uh, hell with one more name called as Gehana that's the original translation of the word Gehana in the even in the gospels he uses this word and please know that it is called as the valley of Hana which was on the south side of Jerusalem and in this valley there used to be constant fire people used to burn all the waste of the whole city in that valley 
there will be always constant fire and you know what during the time of the drought when there was no money even to bury the dead the poor people their dead bodies were burnt in that fire and that fire used to even smell flesh out of it in that fire the smell of flesh also will be there so jesus compares it to the to gehana the valley of hana and you know what the babylonians when they invaded uh, the city they invaded israel judah and at the worship they used to give their children uh, as a fire sacrifice leave the children to be burnt and you know what two of the jewish kings followed the same as well one was manasseh another was ahab and you know what it is said that they even used to whip their children into the uh, in, into that fire so that's where jesus says time and again there was weeping wailing and the gnashing of teeth jesus says it is like gehana church we need to be careful we need to be watchful i have a question for you for instance if you're riding if you're driving or if you're walking in the street all of a sudden you see a house on fire will you keep quiet won't you call the fire department or won't you try to just do some help or cry out for some people to come and help although you do not know who those people are whose house is getting burnt you will do it right but why not with the gospel without the gospel of jesus christ everyone are going to end up in the hell fire now you cannot say i will pray about it please don't misunderstand me i'm not making light of prayer prayer is important but we have to take some actions when our friends when our colleagues when our relatives when our family members do not know jesus christ it is like a house burning let's watch out and let's understand the seriousness of it i understand it's a tough word it's a hard message but every word of god is for our edification and it is for our repentance leading us to the way of life and i encourage everyone let's have a life that is repented and always turning back to god god bless you i understand it's a tough word a topic on hell but it's important for us to know the truth that that hell is real but at the same time as we heard the word today hell is not created for you and for me or rather for any of the mankind so it is also a call of duty to us first and foremost to watch out our life and when we have an opportunity to make right choices right decisions and live our life with god's boundaries let's make every effort to live it out for the holy spirit in you will help you and me and at the same time can we rise up to bring this message of truth to anyone whose house is burning whose life is burning it's a call to us and shall we respond to this call and also i would like to take this opportunity if anyone watching us joining along with us if you have not known jesus christ as the lord and as the savior of your life i will encourage you to receive him into your heart he is the lord he died for you he took away your sins your curses your sicknesses and he rose again and he seated at the right hand of the father can i encourage you to accept jesus as the lord of your life and everyone else shall we carry a repented a humble lifestyle a loving god to take the lordship over our lives shall we pray can we look unto the lord father in jesus name thank you for ministering to us speaking to us oh god thank you for lord showing your way showing your truth unto us and lord even tonight this and even 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 right now lord we pray in the name of jesus let every life for oh god come 
unto your Lordship. And at the same time, anyone and everyone, those who have not known you, as they call unto you, Jesus, take over every heart. Show yourself to be the Lord and the Savior of every life, so God, Father. And even we pray, Lord, even the, the, the perishing world, Lord, we pray, let the light of the gospel shine. And Lord, I pray, even in from our church, take our people and every of our viewers, oh Lord, take them as evangelists to bring the message of hope, Lord, to this dying world. And you be glorified, you be exalted. We pray your blessing over everyone. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank and we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much and God bless you. Yes, and I so much believe that God has been ministering to us. And even if any one of us in the church, anyone is amidst of any kind of a need, please connect with us. And let us also be connected with one another through discipleship groups and connect groups. Let us continue to pray for every of the ministries. Please do pray for us as well. And God is good all the time and He is in control. Let Him take the Lordship. He's able to wipe every tears and meet every needs. God bless you. Have a great week. Shall we say the grace together? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of the Lord, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all till our Jesus Christ comes back in His glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much and God bless you. Have a great day and a great day.